Shiny, what are you doing? Why are you in the Goodwill bag? Oh, hey guys, what's up? It's Ashlyn here. So, um, I wanted to share with you. I picked up a couple books, but then I got home a couple days ago, and this was in there. Book of the month. Um, we have not had a book in the month in a pretty stinking long time, and I don't remember how to open these. Oh wait. All right, we got it. Um, there was tape on it. So, oh, just just like that. All right. So, my first book is, uh, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. Um, I saw this book, and I thought it sounded so good. So, what this one is about is, sorry, these books are super, like, brand new. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer Baker was 19 when her world was torn apart. As fireworks lit up the sky, the summer sky, her neighbors were brutally murdered right outside their barn, and to Jennifer's horror, her younger brother became the prime suspect. In an instant, everything she loved fell away. She escaped, pledging never to return. Until now. Officially, Jennifer is back in town to help a friend, but really she's here to repair her relationship with her teenage daughter. The source of her deepest regret is to solve the infamous Murphy murders. As history begins to repeat itself and dogged local true crime podcasters start sniffing around, the race to the truth puts past and present on a dangerous collision course. Except this time, it's her daughter's life that hangs in the balance. So, I saw this book, and I loved it. Like, I love the tree on it that goes into it, and it's always got a house on the background. But I got this one because I, I don't know, it just sounded so interesting. And then I got an add-on. As if I need more books, right? Um, yeah. I got my first, um, Riley Sager. I got Home Before Dark because I read a sample of it. And I absolutely fell in love with it. So much so that I made it an add-on. <laughs> um, now those of you that don't know, this is a 2020 release from June. Um, says bells that ring themselves, record players that turn on and play music to empty rooms, ghosts that climb out of wardrobes. Maggie Holt doesn't believe in these things, even though they are the details of the story that made her family famous. 25 years ago, she and her parents, Ewan and Jess, moved into Bainberry Hall, a rambly Victorian estate in the Vermont woods. They spent 20 days there before fleeing in the dead of night, an ordeal Ewan later recounted in a horror memoir, House of Horrors. His tale of ghostly happenings and encounters with malevolent spirits became a worldwide phenomenon, rivaling the Amityville horror in popularity and skepticism. Maggie has lived her life in the shadow of her father's book, so when she inherits Bainberry Hall after his death, she returns to renovate the house to prepare it for sale. However, her homecoming is anything but warm. People from the past, chronicled in House of Horrors, lurk in the shadows. And locals are thrilled that their small town has been made infamous thanks to Maggie's father. Even more unnerving is Bainberry Hall itself, a place filled with relics from another era that hint at a history of dark deeds. As Maggie experiences strange occurrences straight out of Ewan's book, she starts to wonder if what he wrote was more than fiction. Fact than fiction. Alternating between Maggie's uneasy homecoming and chapters from her father's book, Home Before Dark, is a story of a house with long buried secrets and a woman's quest to uncover them, even if the truth is far more terrifying than any haunting. Now, see, one thing I really love about this is the fact that this is a book with a book about the house written inside. Now, see, this is what I mean, too. I have a thing for houses, um, book covers with houses on them. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do for not December, but for January, I think I'm going to do the uh, buzzword house. So I think this year I'm going to do my own buzzwords. So if you guys are interested to know what I'm thinking for everything, um, let me know in the comments. But these are the two books I got. Um, this one, I think it's a debut author. I'm not sure. I don't really remember what it had said. But this is from October of 2021. So this was literally just last year. Or last month. <laughs> last month. And then this one, it gives me a price. And this was a $27 book. 
and I got it for $9.99. Um, so the great thing about Book of the Month, by the way, is that not only can you start it for $9.99, but your first book is $9.99. Your add-on is an additional $9.99. So this box cost me like $20, and that one book, Home Before Dark by Rayleigh Sager, is a $27 book in store. So I just had like a $7 savings, if you think about it. The other cool thing they do, too, is they send these cute little bookmarks, and this is Life is Hard Covers. <laughs> so I thought that was really cute and cool. Um, I did also go to Walmart, and I bought two books. Now, the first book I bought is a Colleen Hoover book. It is my first ever Colleen Hoover book for my bookshelves, okay? Um, and I got November 9, um, because everybody's been talking about it. It's also on my TBR for this month, so I figured it would go perfect. I could pick it up right now, you know, all of that fun stuff. I don't have to wait for the library to get one in. I have no idea what this is about. I literally bought this blind, but I've read so many Colleen Hoover books here recently that, like, I'm in love. I would love to absolutely own all of her books and have a whole, like, shelf dedicated to nothing but Colleen Hoover books. Um, I read a sample of Verity recently, and it was really good. I actually only had a sample of this, but this is what it looks like. This is November 9 by Colleen Hoover. Um, it says, an unforgettable love story between a writer and his unexpected muse by number one New York Times bestselling author Colleen Hoover. Fallon meets Ben, an aspiring novelist. There we go again. <laughs> a book about a book. <laughs> the day before her scheduled cross-country move, their untimely attraction leads them to spend Fallon's last day in LA together, and her eventful life becomes the creative inspiration Ben has always sought for his novel. Over time and amidst the various relationships and tribulations of their own separate lives, they continue to meet on the same date every year. And so one day, Fallon becomes unsure if Ben has been telling her the truth of fabricating a perfect reality for the sake of the ultimate plot twist. Can Ben's relationship with Fallon and simultaneously his novel be considered a love story if it ends in heartbreak? Oh, wow. Um, this is usually a $16.99 book. So it's usually a $17 book. I got it for $10. So another $7 savings. <laughs> Don't know how I'm doing it, but hey. <laughs> And then this one was like 12, I think, but this is Stephen King, and I've never heard of this one. It's a limited series starring Julian Moore and Clive Owen on Apple TV+. Plus. Um, I don't own Apple TV, but it's called Lizzie's Story. Okay. No clue what this is about. It's originally an $18 book. I got it for $12, so $6 savings there. But I have no clue what this is about. I picked it up because of Stephen King. I was going to get Billy Summers, but Billy Summers is still like a $30 book almost at Walmart, unfortunately. So I'm not picking that one up. I do have a ton of Stephen King books on my shelf. I'm currently still, I know you guys are going to be like, what? But I am still currently working on The Outsider by Stephen King. Um, I'm over halfway through it now, but it is... I'm trying to grasp what I'm reading, and it's really difficult to grasp it because it's a Stephen King book, you know? But anyway, let's get back to the Stephen King book. Um, it says, Lizzie lost her husband, Scott, two years ago. After a 25-year marriage of profound and sometimes frightening intimacy, Scott was an award-winning, best-selling novelist and a very complicated man. Early in their relationship before they married, Lizzie knew there was a place Scott went, a place that both terrified and healed him could eat him alive or give him the ideas he needed in order to live. Now it's Lizzie's turn to face God's demons, to go to that terrifying place known as Booyah Moon. Okay. What begins as a widow's effort to sort through the papers of her celebrated husband's husband becomes a nearly fatal journey into the darkness he inhabited. Oh. So it's kind of like a verity. It deals with, like, a struggling novelist and the darkness that they hid so well from everybody so i think i'm really gonna like this i wish i had apple tv plus guys like because <laughs> if anybody's watched lizzie's story let me know down in the comments if it's even worth it but i definitely think i want to read this book it sounds really good and if you oh if you look at the o in it 
looks like a reflection on water. Is she walking on water? Like, what is going on in this cover? Oh, interesting. But yeah, that's the other thing I got. So those were the four books I got, two of them from Book of the Month. Um, <clears throat> I am still working on... Oh my gosh, guys. I'm still working on House of Leaves. Okay. I made it to the appendix, which is the letters that they talk about throughout the Davison Records story and the pictures that go with it and the excerpt, excerpts, ex, excerpts. I, I can't say that word, but the excerpts also like the like additional information things and stuff like that. So, um, that's like a hundred something pages long. And then you get to the um, index. And the index, you can just stop reading the book. You don't have to read the index. That just tells you where to go to find everything that they talked about based on that letter. So, um, but yeah, it's, uh, wow. <laughs> it's interesting. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's, um, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, that's all I can really say about it, but with that all being said, that is everything that I have recently accumulated besides Christmas gifts. Um, I have, like I said, I have a lot of Christmas presents sitting on this side of me right now on the table, and they're actually, like, starting to overflow. Like, they're gonna, if I buy any more, which I probably am going to, um... So I send all this to Ohio and Florida. So that's gonna be fun. But that's neither here nor there, right? Um, give me one second. Oh boy. I'm in trouble, guys. <laughs> um, I just came across a flash book sale um flyer thing that I totally forgot about. I was kinda of sitting over here and I was like, what is that? It's November 13th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Schmidt Gallery. Um uh, Gallery. Uh, I'm a member. <laughs> so, members receive half off in bookstore during sale. Prints and photographs are also for sale. And it's $5 per bag that you fill up. Um, I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, because I don't work on Saturday, the 13th. And also because, well, um... I'm a member. <laughs> I get half off, um, and then five dollars to fill a bag. And they're sent, they're gonna be doing photographs and um, prints. So yeah, uh, but yeah, that's all I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you guys have any ideas, um, like okay, so if you guys have any ideas of your own for like buzzwords for the year 2022 like i said january is probably going to be house um because there's so many books i have with like houses on them that deal with houses you know stuff like that um i don't know anything for february march like february through this december yet um i don't want to do the cliche for october of being like spooky or halloween or something and i don't want to do for december next year snow or white so, if you guys have any ideas, let me know down in the comment section below because I would love to know what you guys think. And maybe together we can, like, come up with our own list and then we can, like, post it somewhere. Um, probably, like, my Twitter or something, maybe. I don't know. But I'm definitely going to be doing house. Um, and then also let me know what your favorite genre is because I guess mine is, um, like, true crime or thriller mysteries <laughs> because I have a lot of those. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this, and I will see you in the next video. I'm gonna go, um, make some soup and put a movie on. Bye.